Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 64. This week I'm going to be talking about these Objeco wireless transmitter and receiver for triggering your camera or flash. Uh, these are purchased. I purchased these from uh, Cosworld Photo and uh, I'll put a link up to their store. They delivered them from the UK uh, pretty quickly. It took about a week in shipping time. Uh, shipping is very reasonable. The units cost about 15 bucks a piece and I think shipping was $250 for each unit. So I would classify these as low cost wireless transmitter and receivers. They're definitely more expensive units uh, out there. I think the Pocket Wizard is probably a very popular one, but I was looking for something less expensive and uh, these fit that bill. Uh, these came, uh, I, the reason I chose these was because um, a person named Volker contacted me and said, you know, he had seen episode number 20 where I tried to do this same sort of thing with these young new transmitter and receiver pair and uh, basically it didn't work out so well. There were a bunch of issues. Uh, so uh, I've tested these. These do work a lot better. However, there are some gotchas uh, and my testing showed uh, a few areas where they're a little problematic for the camera axe use case. So I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of using these with the camera axe uh, throughout the rest of this episode. So I'll give you a real basic overview of the two units here. This is the TX unit, so TX is for transmit. And this is the RX unit. It's the receiving unit, so this connects to the flash, and this will connect to the camera axe. Uh, there's uh, hot shoe ports on this unit, and uh, well, first we'll start with uh, this channel button. This basically controls uh, the channel that you're using, so you can use four of these transmitters. Uh, Generally, you only have one transmitter, but if you were in a busy area or something and multiple people were using these units, you can have four different channels uh, without interfering with each other. So that's sort of a nice feature in congested areas. Uh, over here, we have groups. Um, these are, I think, they would refer to them as flash groups. I would call them flash banks. Basically, you can set up different flashes to uh, the transmitter uh, so that you can... Um, have different lighting situations on each flash group. So um, that's a pretty common technique in studios. You know, you might have two flashes connected to group one and two different flashes connected to group two, one for light front lighting and one for side lighting in a studio setting or something. Um, so that's what those units are, are used for. You can also combine groups, which is kind of interesting on these units. Um, all of this is sort of things that are, are nice about the unit, but are not useful um, when using them with a camera axe. Um, and there's a group button over here. Uh, so the switch here, um, this position is for hold. I think that's hand hold your camera. And basically that mode is designed so that when you hit this button, it will trigger your camera. Uh, it's generally used for the camera and not for flashes. Uh, over here we have the, the camera um, button. This is, oddly enough, the mode you would use uh, usually when you're triggering your flashes and you'd connect it to your camera with this hot flash. Um, so when you're in this mode, um, the hold mode, um, most people, and the thing that's documented in the manual, would be to use this button. However, um, in the hold mode, this E CP port works and this you can plug into the camera axe and it works uh, pretty well uh, The problem is that it has a long lag uh, Period so I, I tested this earlier and there's a 42 millisecond lag very consistent uh, when using this ECP port and that's just too long for most things with the camera axe So I was kind of disappointed at that. I, I did some email discussion with Volker and uh, he suggested um, switching it over to camera mode where the lag is much less. And uh, then um, you, the ECP port is disabled. Um, this is just a thing in the firmware. For some reason they chose to do that, which is a little unfortunate. But you can connect the standard camera axe uh, hot shoe flash like this 
directly uh, onto this unit. And uh, then you can have the camera axe trigger through the hot flash unit like this. So now this is connected to the camera axe and uh, you are in camera mode and you're not using any of these ports. You just make sure that you're on the same channel and same group as the uh, receiver. And this is how I actually tested um, in the next section. I'll be sort of showing you the, the lags that I measured and some issues that popped up. But uh, the ECP port will work uh, in this other mode if you switched over to hold mode. But uh, basically, because of the lag, it's, it's not interesting. This mode of using the hot shoe port uh, is definitely going to reduce your lag. So uh, if you're going to try this out and buy some of these uh, Objecto units, make sure you have a hot shoe port like this. Um, if you do want to use the ECP port, the uh, Canon C1 cable is what you need to connect from here because this is 2.5 millimeter jack to the 3.5 millimeter jack. So I've got all the cables you need in the store to, to connect this to the camera axe either way. Um, for the testing that's coming up, we'll be using it uh, in this mode where it's uh, in camera mode and the hot shoe is going to be connected. Now the receiver unit, um, if you're using that uh, EC, <clears throat> ECP port, um, you would have it set over to this camera mode. Um, however, since we're using the uh, <clears throat> other mode with the hot shoe, we're going to have it set to uh, flash mode. And the group here, you just make sure your groups match with the transmitter is and make sure the uh, channels match, that the channel matches uh, the, the transmitter channel. Uh, and then you're going to uh, plug in one of the... Uh, if you're using ECP, you'd use the uh, Canon C1 cable, which is a 2.5 millimeter uh, jack into the camera port, but we're not using the ECP port. We're using that hot shoe method I mentioned, and so we're going to plug this into the, uh, the flash port. And that's basically the settings, uh, um, sort of how things will be physically connected uh, for the test that's coming up. So this is the setup I used to uh, measure the actual lag introduced by these wireless transmitter and receivers. Now the uh, manual gave me really high hopes. It was saying that the uh, lag would be uh, a minimum, I was a little curious about that word, of 400 microseconds. And uh, you know, if it was really 400 microseconds, that would be great. That would work for a lot of types of uh, Camera axe photography, water droplets who would work fine with that, um, a lot of things. Really high speed activities like uh, photographing moving projectiles, uh, exploding objects, those still wouldn't work. Uh, this would be too much lag for those. But a lot of things, uh, you'd be able to get rid of the wires on your flashes and a lot of people have been asking me about that. So that would be great if it was uh, really 400 microseconds. So I went in with high hopes. Uh, the first problem I mentioned was that ECP port, which I was expecting to use, uh, added 42 micro, I'm sorry, milliseconds of lag, way too much. Uh, that's a hundred times more than the 400 microseconds. So that, that, that was too much lag. Um, I started using this, the, the hot shoe mechanism. You can see it right there. Uh, and I, I got really crazy numbers and I was like, what's going on here? Um, sometimes it was fast. It sometimes actually saw 400 microseconds and uh, other times I uh, saw anywhere from 8 to 25 milliseconds. So a variability of eight between 8 and 25 milliseconds of uh, lag is, is a pretty big problem. Um, so I started playing around with the numbers some more and uh, found that uh, basically these units go down, go into a sleep mode after five seconds. And uh, that's not very long. So um, if you want to use these units with a camera axe, they'll work. But you'll probably want to, uh, oops, pull the flash out of sleep mode. 
Um, what you'll probably want to do is you'll probably want to trigger the system uh, once like that and then trigger it again to uh, within five seconds uh, to get that 400 microseconds of lag. So you just will want to go once to activate these these triggers or these wireless transmitter and receiver and then again within the five millisecond lag and five I'm sorry within the five second window uh, on your real trigger and you'll get a very consistent 400 microseconds of lag so uh, all this complicated mechanism to measure that is really doing is it's uh, sort of taking each wire and splitting it you can see that there's these splitter cables um, and I'm splitting the, both the camera axe signal, which is the leading edge of the trigger, and the signal um, coming out of the flash, I'm splitting that one too. And uh, one of the signals is going to the necessary ports that I explained before, and the other one is going to this uh, breadboard, which pulls out the signals so that my scope can uh, measure the, the lag. So here's a case where it has a 400 uh, microsecond lag, but if you wait more than five seconds, that 400 microsecond lag will go to a random 8 to 25 millisecond lag. I, I've seen that with sort of uh, lower end watchdog timers where they they must use some internal pulling mechanism or something and they uh, don't wake up with uh, very good predictability. Uh, better watchdog timers will have a much uh, more even response time, um, more predictable wake up period, but uh, I suspect that this is probably just uh, uh, the way that their uh, microcontroller they're using in their transmitter and receiver is uh, sort of designed. It, it likely has this variability in wake up time. It would be really nice if we could turn off that power saving feature. Um, maybe someday I'll crack these open and see if there's a way to disable the uh, <clears throat> sleep mode, but most likely it would require a firmware update, um, and I really don't know how to get such a thing from one of these Chinese companies like this. But uh, if anybody has ideas on, on how I could get rid of that, uh, that sleep mode that's really making these a lot less useful to, for the camera acts, that would be awesome. But even with that limitation, the, these will work with the camera acts. You just have to work within that five second window um, to make them work. But uh, I'd say that the, the results were pretty positive and uh, pretty happy with uh, the fact that there is a, a wireless system that works with the camera acts. Um, for some things, like where you're triggering the camera, uh, even a 25 millisecond lag isn't going to matter much because your shutter lag is already going to be 70 milliseconds. So uh, there's certainly cases where these will work, and uh, hopefully some people will find this episode useful. Uh, one last thing I wanted to say about wireless uh, transmitter and receiver, something that's been on my to-do list for a while, is uh, using these XBs. I know they have a, a uh, way of passing through uh, bits on their uh, wireless protocol and there it would be a lot more work to set it up. Um, certainly something I'd like to look into. I think you could make wireless sensors and wireless flash triggers that consistently had one millisecond or less lag time there and you have full control because you would own the firmware and everything um, which would be great but, uh, you know, that's a lot more work and, and a lot of people can't set that up. So uh, these will work in the uh, work for people who just want something that can be plug and play today. Uh, I've listed the limitations. So uh, as long as you're aware of those and those are acceptable for a use case, these should work out pretty well. Thanks for watching.